efforts in this country to protect our freedoms, whether it's our religious freedom, as we discussed with Lori Windham in a segment on today's show, or our freedom of speech, our freedom to, to, to gather. But what about the right to question science, to question climate change? Baker Hostetler partner David Rivkin, a longtime contributor to our op-ed pages, has a fascinating piece today up on WSJ.com, and he joins us now. David, uh, you argue that scientists need to be protected if they question man-made climate change. Is that really a serious problem in this country? It is, uh, Mary, good to be with you. It is a serious problem. We have at least two attorneys general, state attorneys general of California and New York, uh, who are investigating uh, scientists as well as some companies, most prominently ExxonMobil, uh, for allegedly engaging in a conspiracy to mislead the public. Words like uh, RICO, uh, which is a very powerful statute with lots of, uh, with lots of enforcement options being thrown about. The uh, Attorney General has indicated in the hearing recently, U.S. Attorney General, that uh, the FBI is looking into this as well. So it is a serious problem, and it's not just a problem for climate change scientists. It's the problem, frankly, Mary, for any scientist, but beyond that, this is a serious effort to stifle free speech. So you're you do it with your op-ed today, you propose something called the Free Speech and Science Project. What is it? Who's behind it? How is it funded? Well, it, it's not funded right now. Uh, we're hoping to, uh, to get it funded. But the effort here is to reach out to people who are being investigated. And let's be clear, investigating people, particularly individual scientists, but even companies, is a huge burden. It's intimidating. And hopefully, uh, be able to take the fight back to the uh, to their tormentors. There are some litigation options that are available to go after for the state government officials and federal government officials, merely for the act of launching an investigation. If that investigation constitutes uh, a retaliation for the exercise of their speech, which of course is a classic violation of First Amendment. When you say it's a burden on individuals to defend themselves, let's say I'm a scientist at some state university here in America and I get charged with misleading the public. What, what would it cost me to mount a defense? Every, well, it costs you a lot of money unless you're able to receive free help. But, and let's forget about that for a second. It truly destroys your career. Your articles would not be published. You would not be invited to participate in joint projects. You would not be in, invited to, uh, to go to conferences. You would not receive any grants, any funding. And frankly, your own institution may, especially if you do not have tenure, may throw you out. It, it is the kind of a modern-day equivalent to the classical Roman punishment of, of, of prescribing people, denying them, you know, the uh, uh, all comforts of life. It's, it's, and so, it's, David, would you be involved in this? And, and are there any other lawyers that you've signed up so far? Well, I mean, uh, my colleagues and I are very much interested in, in, in doing that. What brings us to this is not only sort of a deep abiding love for the First Amendment, but the fact we've done quite a bit of, of, of work pushing back uh, using litigation tools against individuals, state government officials in particular in Wisconsin, as you may know, uh, that have launched pretextual investigations really to silence their political critics. Okay. So uh, we, we kind of uh, have a uh, I have an experience in this space. Well, if you want to learn more, the op-ed is called Punishing Climate Change Skeptics. The author is David Rivkin with Baker Hostetler. Thanks for joining the show.